What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. The Red Sox traded with the Miami Marlins. No, it's not the big giant starting pitching trade that we've been talking about all season. Instead, it has to do with a reliever that we DFA'd a week ago, Matt Barnes. Now, we talked about on this channel when Matt Barnes was DFA'd that there is a possibility that the Red Sox decided to DFA him because they figured they may be able to trade him in that week they have after you DFA someone. And it turns out, we were kind of right because the Boston Red Sox did trade Matt Barnes to the Miami Marlins. Now we've already covered Matt Barnes departure from the Boston Red Sox. What may have led to this decision the Red Sox may look like without Matt Barnes. So if you want to check that video out, it will be in the description of this video. So instead, what we're going to focus on today is the half of the trade the Red Sox got in return, who they got for Matt Barnes. We're going to talk about what impact this player may have on the Boston Red Sox. We're going to talk about why the Red Sox may have been interested in this player from the Marlins and we're ultimately going to decide whether or not this was a good or bad trade for this Red Sox team but before we get into that do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk Red Sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well as it helps it out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one let's get into it Okay, so I should probably start out by saying that part of this trade also included sending some money over to the Miami Marlins. Now, I think it was all kind of generally assumed that the Red Sox would be paying some of Matt Barnes' salary, but the Red Sox got a really good deal on this because they're only paying about $1 million a year of Matt Barnes' salary, which I'm super impressed with. I genuinely thought they were going to have to take on three, three and a half million dollars of his salary. So the actual trade itself is that they are sending Matt Barnes plus that $1 million cash to the Miami Marlins for pitcher Richard Blyer. He's a left-handed relief pitcher. Now, Richard Blyer is a 29-year-old pitcher who has been in the big leagues for seven years and has actually put together a really impressive career as a relief pitcher. In 308 games in those seven years, Blyer has a 306 ERA with a FIP slightly higher than that at 349, but only about by 0.4 points. So it's not like he's been insanely lucky or unlucky on the mound, which is a really good thing. He's a whip of one 1.20 again cumulatively in those seven years and he has an era plus of 143 meaning that compared to the average era in baseball over those seven years blyer was about 43 percent more productive than the average pitcher in baseball as for his most recent statistics in 2022 he had a little bit of a down year nothing insane but definitely a little bit down compared to his uh, yearly sort of totals here and that was in 55 games so in 55 games in 2022 matt blyer had an era array of 3.55 a fit that was actually lower than that by about 0.3 points at 3.27 so a little bit unlucky last year but not by a ton not by a super significant margin it wasn't like he was getting blue pits here and there every single at bat but there was some unluckiness in his era statistic for 2022 he had a whip of 1.441 in 2022 and had still managed a positive era plus at 115 so despite having that down year it wasn't exactly an insanely down year like I mentioned but he still had a bit of a down year and it's fairly impressive that with that down year with statistics above what his career statistics look like Blyer was still able to be a productive pitcher for the Miami Marlins in 2022. Now taking a look at his baseball savant page here it's a bit of a mixed bag you've got some blue you've got some red and we're going to focus on right now the positives on this baseball savant page. He does have a really low walk percentage it's actually one of the lowest in the league so a guy that really slams the strike zone instead of trying to work around players which can be good can be bad and it seems like that is sort of the theme of the Boston Red Sox this offseason we talked about it a couple of times they seem to be continuing that trend as they try and bring in more talent guys who are going to slam that strike zone the Red Sox got burned a lot last year off the walks I'm not sure if everyone kind of remembers that but there were a lot of like first inning walks or big moment walks that ended up either spoiling the game early or ruining the game late so it seems like the Red Sox are trying to avoid that and that trend continues here as well with Blyer. His chase rate is also really good, meaning that the percentage of time players swing at balls outside of the strike zone when Blyer is pitching is higher than what it is for the average throughout the league. So he's getting more swings and misses outside of the zone. He also has a really high percentile for barrel percentage, meaning that players had a really hard time barreling up his pitches, which is actually really interesting because the rest of his opponent batting average type statistics or opponent statistics in the batter's box against him are really low comparatively in his percentiles 
to the rest of the league. And speaking of his percentiles to the rest of the league, let's talk about some of the blue things on this page that could be a bit of a concern going into 2023 with Blyer in the bullpen. In my opinion, there are definitely some things to be concerned with while taking a look at his baseball savant page. The number one thing in my opinion is that last year in 2022, opponents didn't have a super hard time making contact with Blyer's pitches. His whiff percentage was towards the bottom of the league. His strikeout rate was towards the bottom of the league. He was towards the bottom of the league in statistics like expected batting average, expected slug, exit velo, hard hit percentage, stuff like that. Opponents were able to make contact with his pitches a lot, but that doesn't mean he was not an effective pitcher. We took a look at his actual on paper statistics, right? And that was still productive compared to the rest of baseball. So to me, what this indicates is that Blyer got a lot of weak contact, a lot of contact where his defense had to back him up. Yes, but a lot of weak contact that kept the ball in the yard and he was able to get out. And so to me, yes, it's concerning. Yes, it's something to keep your eye on going into 2022, but I'm not overly concerned with his baseball savant page because some of the key items here are in red. And I think that's something that we can take out that's positive about this. And on top of that too, this was one of 2022 was one of the downer years in his career. So the chances he continues with this downward trend are minimal based on his seven years in major league baseball. So again, I'm not overly concerned with the blue on Flyers baseball savant page. It doesn't seem like the Red Sox are that much either. Clearly they see something in him here that they believe he could be an effective player for this team in 2022 because they're being really careful with this bullpen. So for them to go out and get a guy like this probably to me indicates that there is something there that they can either tweak or monitor closely that could improve his statistics in 2023. Now, it's also probably important to mention that Blyer is not in arbitration anymore. He is signed to a contract and that contract that is coming over to the Boston Red Sox is a one year, $3 million deal with a club option for 2024. So in total coming back for the $7.5 million that we gave up for Matt Barnes is about $4 million on a contract with Blyer. So you're saving about $3.5 million in total money by sending Matt Barnes to the Miami Marlins. So at the end of the day, do I like this trade? Yes or no. Do I think the Red Sox won this trade? Yes or no. I don't know if the Red Sox fully won this trade, but I do think this was a really great trade for the Boston Red Sox for what they need right now. One, the Red Sox do need a good, another reliable lefty option in this bullpen because right now, as we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, Joely Rodriguez is your only option. So adding in Blyer, a lefty, a experienced lefty, a guy who's had success at the major league level for seven straight years now is something that I think could be a really big factor in this team's success, at least bullpen wise in 2023. He's also a guy that's probably not going to be that sort of stressful situation, step it up or go home type reliever. He'll probably be a middle reliever, a guy who tends to eat innings when we've got a couple of innings against maybe a lefty heavy lineup. But either way, I think the addition of Blyer is a great one. I think the fact that they were able to get something from Matt Barnes is also really great and they were able to save money they added about 3.5 million dollars to their luxury tax total here so they may be able to add some more additions throughout maybe you know a couple of utility guys something like that some more minor league depths around that area could be something we are looking at with that 3.5 million dollars added on so overall i think for the red sox it is something that they really needed and something that is going to benefit them a lot and for the marlins they're getting matt barnes so i think this was a pretty fair trade all in all and honestly the Red Sox may be ahead in this trade when it comes to winners and losers but that's just my opinion so let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of this trade? Do you like this trade? Do you not like this trade? Do you like Blyer? Do you not like Blyer? What are your thoughts on the latest Red Sox trade down below? Let me know everything. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys hit the like button on this video as well, as it helps these out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seat.